Welcome back friends. My name is Brian and I am back in the garage once again. Today we're going to start working on our KLX 110 again. As you may recall, if you've watched this channel in the past, that I have done a lot of work on this KLX. I've done a cradle installation, a cradle support installation. We've taken the motor out of the chassis. I've configured the clutches in a few different ways. This time we're going to do something really cool and we are going to tear down the KLX motor. I got a lot of great things in store for you on that. We're going to tear down the motor and eventually rebuild it. Got a bunch of cool mods coming that were provided to us by our friends over at T-Bolt USA. So we got a lot of neat stuff I'm going to show you. So a couple other funny things. So when I was tearing down this motor, you would not believe it, but whoever rebuilt this engine before left out a bunch of critical parts. And I just sometimes marvel. I'm thinking like, you know, you build your motor and, and you're sitting there looking at your, you know, finished job and there's a bunch of nuts and bolts left on the, on top of your workbench. And, you know, to me, I'm thinking like, you know, what are you thinking when something like that happens? You fixed my car? Even all the ashtray. Oh man, I can't believe this. Melvin, thanks, man. There's always some extra parts when I put them back together. I don't know why. But some people, I guess, you know, they just, they don't care or whatever, but I will show you the missing parts that uh, were supposed to be in this motor, but in fact were not. And there's another thing too that's going to blow your mind. So there was a, a case repair. It's so bad that was done on this uh, engine, but I'll, I'll show you at, at the end. If you want to watch and see what happened with this case repair, I'll put a little clip about that at the end of the video. So finally, just a couple small things. As always, I have time points in the description box below. So if you want to skip around, you know the procedure that you want to do you can look in the description box find the time point for your specific teardown issue and skip to that point point. and also all the parts that I used in this job including all the tools will be listed in the description box as well so if you want to get some tools and things like that for building your own motor you can look there for those finally I just want to give you a word of encouragement one of the things about doing things like this is it's very intimidating especially if you've never done it before but I just want to encourage you and tell you that if you follow along and you're patient and you don't skip any steps and leave parts out it's really not that difficult to do a job like this so just be confident that you can do it get the tools that you need it's far cheaper to buy these tools than to send your motor off to somebody else and maybe get it back with a bunch of missing parts like the engine that I got so trust me you can do this if you just follow along it's a lot of fun it's a great a great way to have fun in your garage I'm gonna show you step by step so anyway let's get ready pick up some tools and go to work all right, so before we start, I wanted to mention that it is likely that you'll find having an impact driver is essential. Remove the four screws fitting the camshaft sprocket cover. Remove the cover, noting that there's an O-ring behind the cover. Don't lose track of the O-ring. Loosen the cap bolt on the camshaft chain tensioner, then unscrew the mounting bolts and remove the camshaft chain tensioner. Next, remove the magneto cover. To do this, loosen and remove the fasteners attaching it to the crankcase. Once the fasteners are removed, you may have to use something like this razor to break the seal. Now let's move on to the other side of the motor and start by removing the clutch cover. These screws may need a little bit of motivation from your impact driver to get them to cooperate. So remove the cover screws and separate the cover from the crankcase. If you have to use some sort of wedge like this plastic razor or putty knife to pry the cover off, just be careful not to gall the mating surfaces. All right, all the various covers are off. When we come back, we're gonna tear into the heart of this motor. We'll get into that in just a second. Next to come off is the camshaft sprocket. The way that I do this is to interrupt the camshaft rotation using an oil filter wrench and then loosen and remove the sprocket bolts.
Then remove the sprocket. Now back to the crankshaft to remove the flywheel. The way that I recommend doing this is by restraining the rotation of the flywheel with a flywheel holder and then loosening the flywheel nut. Now a lot of people use an impact wrench for this procedure, but that can knock the crankshaft out of alignment. To remove the flywheel, you need a flywheel puller. With the center bolt unscrewed so that the threads are exposed, thread the puller onto the flywheel until it's completely seated. Then tighten the center bolt until it engages the end of the crankshaft. Next, restrain the puller with a suitable wrench and tighten the center nut. Once the flywheel breaks free, remove it. Be careful not to lose track of this woodruff key also. Now switching sides, if you're lucky enough to have removed the clutch cover without having this release ball assembly fall off, simply remove it. Below that, find and remove the release lever, the release plate, ball bearing, and ball bearing holder. Restrain the primary clutch from rotating, and again, I'm using an oil filter wrench. Then loosen and remove the center nut. Now you can remove the primary clutch shoe linings. Now back onto the secondary clutch. Using a clutch holder, restrain the clutch from rotating while loosening the center nut. Once this nut is removed, remove both clutches simultaneously. Moving on to the cylinder, loosen and remove the oil pipe. There's actually a third bolt that attaches this pipe here, but that bolt was missing on my bike. Finally, make sure not to lose track of these copper washers. Now on to cylinder removal. In a crisscross pattern, slowly and incrementally loosen the four cylinder head nuts and these two cylinder head bolts. Once loose, remove all six. Then remove the cylinder head. And the cylinder head gasket. On my motor, whoever previously rebuilt this motor forgot to install these dowel pins marked A in this picture. In fact, this motor is missing a lot of dowel pins and I'm not gonna go over all of them, but when I create the video detailing how to reassemble this motor, I'll demonstrate where each towel pin should be installed. Now on to cam chain removal. Start by removing the upper cam chain guide bolt, then remove the guide through the cylinder. The lower chain guide is wedged into the slot and you may need to like coax it out with a screwdriver like this small one you see here. Back to the other side of the motor, with a pair of pliers, extract the return spring anchor from the crankcase boss, which enables the removal of the kick shaft as an assembly. Among the many missing parts on my motor was this thrust washer, so when removing the kick shaft assembly, just make sure to keep track of that. Depress the shift mechanism arm, then on the left side of the motor, drive out the shift shaft using gentle blows with this hammer. Next comes the removal of the gear positioning plate and lever. First remove the screw, and this may need an impact driver to break it loose, then the pivot bolt, and remove the plate and lever as an assembly. Next, remove the shift drum can cover. Remove the center bolt to remove the cover and can as an assembly. There's a pin between the drum and the can, so don't lose track of that. And now for something just completely shocking, the oil screen. A lot of stuff in there that shouldn't be. All right, so that was really nasty. Let's move on to the oil pump. Rotate the oil pump drive gear to reveal the oil pump screws. Remove the screws. And the pump. Again, these screws may benefit from using the impact driver to break them loose. Once removed, remove the knock pin and the two small O-rings. Back again to the other side of the motor, remove the gear position switch with its attached O-ring and the small gear position switch finger and spring. Next, remove the cylinder. If you have to pry the cylinder from the crankcase, be very careful not to gall the mating surfaces. Once again, this motor was missing very important knock pins. Make sure to keep track of those on your motor. 
All right, enough parts are off this motor that we can now go into splitting the cases. When we come back, we're going to do just that. Be right back. All right, so now things are getting really exciting. It's time to split the cases. Start by removing the crankcase screws. And then the two screws fastening the camshaft chain holder. Remove the cam chain. Okay, now for the case splitter installation. Again, I have a link for this tool in the description box. So screw in the threaded rods provided with the splitter into the bosses you see. Thread them until all the way seated. Next, locate the three arms of the splitter onto the threaded rods. The arms of the splitter should rest on the crankcase. Next, thread on and tighten the threaded flange nuts. Slowly tighten the center nut of the splitter. Sometimes the dowel pins and the output shaft can cause binding, so pay close attention to the center mating line of the two crankcase halves to ensure that they separate evenly. All right, so now on to removing the transmission. Pull straight up on the shift rods. Then you can slide out the two shift forks. Next, remove the shift drum by firmly pulling it upwards. Then, keeping the gears aligned, take both gear shafts out together. Note the shaft under which my left thumb is placed. This is the input shaft. Under my left thumb should be a very important thrust washer, but like so many parts on this motor, it was missing also. Now on to the final step, removing the crankshaft. Pressing the crank out employs using the crankcase splitter, but the center bolt is not long enough to engage the end of the crankshaft without some sort of spacer, so I'm using these two pieces of two inch square tubing. And that's it. The motor is ready for inspection and then rebuild. All right, so I hope you found that video useful and uh, hope that you keep track of the parts that you take out of your motor, unlike the person whoever rebuilt this motor did. Terrible job. Also, I want to mention that earlier in this video, I talked about a case repair. I want to show you that case repair. So somebody actually used JB Weld to hold a broken transmission bearing uh, boss in place. So somehow that had gotten broken off. They used JB Weld to repair it. I just couldn't believe that someone would use JB Weld in such a critical spot. I mean, if the transmission, you know, got knocked or you shifted really aggressively, something like that. The, the whole transmission could implode inside the cases. I mean, why someone would trust JB Weld for this job, I can't explain it. But I took my case over to Randy Porter over at Lone Star Metalworks, and he did his metalworking sorcery. He is a fantastic welder. He fixed this case repair for me, and it basically stronger than it ever was. So a couple of the things. I have 5,500 subscribers now. Thank you so much. We just hit that number yesterday, I think it was. So thank you so much for liking and subscribing the YouTube algorithms. Love, likes, and subscribe. So if you like the channel and enjoy what you see, please feel free to like and subscribe and leave nice comments are also allowed in the comment box below if you choose to do that. Finally, I just wanna say, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you can do these jobs. You know, if you pick up these tools and go out there and put a little bit of effort into it, follow along, be patient, you too can be the master of your garage.